Lab leak most likely caused pandemic. The conclusion on the headline isn't actually supported by the context of the article. How is that legal? I know, right? People need to get over the fact that they're just reading bumper stickers. The word for China is Zhongguo, which means the center kingdom. We have a ton to cover with China. So I'm just gonna kick it off. I don't even know where to start, but. I know, that's how it feels, right? Right. There's, that's exactly how it feels. But it seems like China's goal is global domination, or at least they wanna become the, the next superpower, the, new, the next global superpower. I think a good place to start is recently in the news. It's been everywhere, have you heard this? Lab leak most likely caused pandemic Energy Department says. That's from the New York Times. Yeah, no, you're, I mean, the this is an, a, a fantastic example of, <laughs> it's a fantastic example of how bad the government is sometimes at doing their own job. Yeah. Right? So the Department of Energy basically ran a study, and then they weren't careful enough in the use of their terminology, and then this this uh, a line out of place essentially turns into this gigantic media frenzy that is essentially trying to say that the government is confirming that the coronavirus came from a lab in China. Yeah. It, so this exact, I mean, I think this is a fantastic place to start because multiple government agencies have looked into this and have reviewed the findings that the Department of Energy used to make their statement. And they've all confirmed that there is not enough evidence to be able to refute or deny that coronavirus is either natural or man-made from a lab. But Department of Energy did their own thing, right? Didn't mm -hmm. properly vet it, didn't properly communicate it. So we've got this open question now about, is the government trying to hide something? Can we say that it was developed in a lab? Whatever else it might be. It's important to me because there's a lot of Rightfully so, there's a lot of very concerned and upset people about COVID, mm -hmm. right? about coronavirus or the novel coronavirus that became COVID-19's, you know, uh, causing factor. Uh, and it's, it's, been, it's been a core facet of our lives, whether we like it or not, for the better part of, what, 45 months, I think. Like, it's a yeah. long time. It's been a long time. Real quick, before we dive into this, because I want to... I want to hit coronavirus. For sure. <laughs> so this is, we, we've been talking about, I've talked about it, you've talked about it, I've heard it on interviews, how the media is essentially just a bunch of bullshit nowadays. And so here, this is just one article that I pulled up. I pulled up New York Times. <clears throat> and like I said, the headline is, Lab Leak Most Likely Caused Pandemic, Energy Department Says. Then if we read here, New intelligence has prompted Energy Department to conclude that an accidental laboratory leak in China most likely caused the coronavirus pandemic through U.S. spy agencies remained divided over the origins of the virus, American officials said on Sunday. The conclusion was a change from the department's earlier position that it was undecided on how the virus emerged. Then this is where it gets interesting. Some officials briefed on the intelligence said that it was a relatively weak, or I'm sorry, said that it was relatively weak and that the Energy Department's conclusion was made with low confidence, suggesting its level of certainty was not high. While the department shared the information with other agencies, none of them changed their conclusion, officials said. So I'm not going to read the entire article, but that just goes to show you that you can't just read the headlines. Exactly right, especially not when it comes to intelligence or anything based on intelligence. So you heard a couple of words in there, right? We heard the word likely, and then we heard the word confidence. There's a grid when, when professional intelligence agencies collect intelligence, they have to run that intelligence through a, a grid, like a vetting process, so that when they communicate to somebody else, they can communicate using the same terminology. So if you're NSA, I'm CIA, somebody else is DIA, we all have our own language inside our departments. I mean, you know as well as I do, the military has its own language. Mm -hmm. CIA has its own language. You can't, it's really hard for two people from different agencies to have a straightforward conversation. So when you talk about intelligence, they create tools so that we can communicate in common terms. 
likeliness and confidence are two of those terms that that are that are pretty well structured so that all the different agencies can communicate transparently with each other. Problem is, it only works with each other. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work with the media. So likeliness has to do with how probable something is. Confidence has to do with your the, the way you vetted the information itself. So something can be high likely, like highly likely, and high confidence. That means it's a high probability and we have strong faith in the information. Something can also be very likely, but we have low confidence in the information, right? So it means we do believe that there's a high probability this is what happened, but the information that we have to support that conclusion is very weak. We can also have situations where something is not likely and we have high confidence in the information, mm -hmm. right? And all of that changes the probabilities. So when agencies speak to each other, which is what you were just reading, right? Uh, DOE was talking to other intelligence agencies and they're all divided because some say that it had high likelihood and some say that it was low confidence. That's, that's them speaking a language that the average person doesn't understand. And then you throw in the New York Times, they just want to get you to click on the headline. Yep. And then the conclusion is, the conclusion is bogus. The conclusion on the headline isn't actually supported by the context of the article. Yeah. How is that legal? I know, right? It's it's people need to get over the fact that they're just they're just reading bumper stickers all the time. That's all it is. It's That's just a fantastic a sticker, way of putting it. You know, but back to China. Hmm. What are your thoughts? Was it in a lab? So was this an act of war? I will say no. I do not think it was an act of war. Okay. Yeah, very good, right? My understanding from my own education and my own experience with the Chinese is that culturally, the Chinese are completely different than Americans, right? Americans and Chinese alike, we, we think like our culture. It doesn't matter whether you're gender specific, whether you're gender neutral, whether you're old, young, educated, uneducated, doesn't matter the color of your skin, Americans think like Americans. We think through a lens of capitalism and opportunity and equality and fairness and freedom. We all think through that. We just might disagree on exactly what it looks like. Chinese people also all think through a Chinese lens. And part of that Chinese lens is a 5,000 year history. Mm -hmm of being Chinese. A big part of that lens is bringing honor to your family name. Being the person who protects the honor that your parents and your grandparents and your great grandparents have put into protecting your family name and not being the one to ruin it, right? In the United States, we love change. I love the fact that I am changing the future of my last name. That's not the same to a Chinese person. They, many ways, if they're gonna change, if they're gonna take a risk, to change their family heritage, they're also risking failing. And if they fail their endeavor, it's gonna bring dishonor to their family name. So they're a completely different mindset than Americans, right? Another part of that Chinese lens is this idea that China, in Chinese, the word for China is Zhongguo, which means the center kingdom. So everything the Chinese do, everything the Politburo does, everything senior Chinese officials think of is all through this lens of China being the center kingdom. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean they have to be, uh, it doesn't mean they have to be rulers of the world, but they do have to be the biggest kingdom. So superpower, the modern day superpower idea fits them culturally very, very well. There can be other powers but they are the most powerful, okay. right? There can be other countries, but they're in the center of everything. When we think about how they set up their model of, of supply chain management, when you think about how they've consolidated rare earth minerals and you think about how they've consolidated uh, intellectual property from all over Europe and Latin America and the United States, you can see they centralize everything. It's called the central party. Like they centralize. They wanna put themselves at the center of the hub and spoke. It's very different than the United States, right? We wanna be the thing that breaks the wheel. So culturally, they have this need to, this, this predisposition to being the center of it all, being the, the most powerful, but not the world police. 
-hmm. They don't want everybody to be a communist party. We want every other country to be a democracy. That's failed us, I don't know how many times. How many Gulf Wars did we go through because we couldn't make that happen? Yeah. <laughs> they don't want everybody to be a communist country, but they do want to be the most powerful country and be communist themselves. Why do you think, I love everything you just said, but it doesn't answer my question. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that, what makes you believe that the coronavirus was not released and was not an act of war. With everything else that they have going on, I'm just gonna run through some stuff. Mm -hmm. These are all categories yep. I wanna talk about. But, you know, to me, on top of all this stuff, I'll, I'll get to it. So, I mean, they own the supply chain. The, the, and there's the fentanyl crisis. They're, they're aiding the cartels with the fentanyl crisis. They're buying up our farmland. They're influencing our politicians. They're influencing big tech. Then we have the TikTok debacle. We have the spy balloons that have been mm -hmm. flying over the U.S. We got the propaganda war. They're trying to take Taiwan. They're settling Africa. They were there to negotiate with Afghanistan before we ever even pulled out. Then there's the lab leak, supposedly. <clears throat> so it seems like, and I'm sure there's more that I'm not thinking of, but with all these things happening, there's the race to AI, which he's already said, the person that wins the race to AI is gonna achieve global domination. With with all these things that they have in place and 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 they're winning on, how do, why, what makes you think that the coronavirus was not an act of war? On top of that, why they were never held accountable ever by anybody in the world. It was like, it was like the Chinese just got a free pass and they just, mm -hmm. I mean, the world is a complete disaster right now. Yeah, no, I get it. So I would say there's, there's three reasons I don't think it was an act of war. The first is that China, their strategic MO is to do things quietly, not to do things loud and noisy. Mm -hmm. Coronavirus, the way it happened was loud and noisy. It, it broke out in their country first, and then they tried to get it under control. And they were, I mean, the world knew there was a virus in China that they were trying to control. That's not quiet, right? Everything else on that list, from hypersonic missiles to the AI war to, to, to growing infrastructure in Africa, that's all quiet. You have to look to find that. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to look to find out about the coronavirus outbreak. The second reason I don't think it was an intentional act of war is because... Where did swine flu come from? China. Where did bird flu come from? China. China has a history of unsanitary experimental conditions where novel natural viruses are born and spread. And I, I don't mean this is a, a 50 year history. I mean, this is like a 15 year history. Bird flu, swine flu, coronavirus, which was another, a coronavirus is a type of flu virus, right? These were all novel viruses originating in China that spread around the world. China was never held accountable for any of them, but at the same time, it's a pattern of behavior, right? It's a pattern that shows disgusting unsanitary conditions. If you've ever gotten a chance to see even just a Chinese restaurant in China, it's filthy. Like they do not have the health and sanitation standards we have in the United States. They don't have to. Their population is different, their culture is different, everything's different. So it's a, it's a petri dish for disgusting things to happen and for, for new natural evolutions of viruses to take place. So because of that track record, coronavirus behaved exactly the same way as the other viruses, a breakout in China that spread throughout the world. And then the third reason that I don't believe it was an act of war is because China, China will pull the trigger when they want something. Mm -hmm. But they pull that trigger at a strategically beneficial point, like they did in Hong Kong, right? When they took Hong Kong, China took Hong Kong in weeks. They pulled the trigger when everything was lined up and everything was ready. They made a decisive action and they, they took it and the world had nothing to say about it, right? When China m moves on Taiwan, and I've, I fully expect China will move on Taiwan before we've identified our next president, right? I, I agree. <laughs> 100% agree with that. They will make that move. It will be decisive. It will be fast. 
it will be backed by multiple secondary and tertiary support efforts. It will not be a, a, a debacle like COVID was. The, these are all the reasons why I don't believe it was an act of war. Could they have been developing biological antigens, biological weapons, or biological defense? They could have been, possibly. Everything's a possibility, right? I would even say that that could be pot, like that could be in the place of like 40 to 70% probable, but we don't have any information to support that. Maybe it's out there and we just haven't seen it, but, but for me, when I take a look at all the, all the data that I do have, I, I see the history of swine flu, bird flu. I see the history of how they operate in Hong Kong. And I see, uh, I see the fact that, that coronavirus was handled like a, like a freaking disaster. That does not strike me as an intentional act of war. Why do you think there was no repercussions? So my guess is that the reason that we haven't seen repercussions is because of what happened when it hit the democratic world. You can't, let's just look at the United States. It's easy for us to remember the United States. It first hit the United States when Donald Trump was president. Mm -hmm. And Trump made a big deal out of saying, it's, we don't know what it is. It's a virus, don't panic. Right? It was don't panic, don't panic, don't panic, as liberal media and the opposite viewpoint to the Republican Party was panicking, counting. Once you start counting sick people and counting beds and counting dead, it didn't, it didn't serve us in Vietnam. It didn't serve us in Afghanistan or Iraq. Why would we think it's going to serve us during the coronavirus outbreak? Right? So now everybody's worried about numbers without having any context for those numbers, without actually doing the deep research. If you remember how many bad... Uh, medical journal articles came out. How much the, the, what was it? The, uh, it was like the, the American Center for Disease Control. The CDC came out and said early on that there's no evidence that coronavirus can spread from human to human. Right. Do you remember that? They made, oh, a, yeah, they made a freaking meme out of it with like a little boy on his grandpa's shoulders or some garbage. They were so wrong. So with, in the middle of all this, then we have a cha a, a, an election year and a change in president. And then the, once coronavirus was deemed not a superbug, then it became a political issue. Once it became a political issue, somebody had to, had to run on a platform about coronavirus. Biden won. He had to do something about coronavirus because he had just won on that platform. So he pours money into vaccines and he, pours, and he forces vaccine among government employees. And we all know what happened from there. Essentially, the United States government got behind the idea that coronavirus was a major issue. Mm -hmm. And every other first world country followed our lead. There's no walking that back. There's no, you can't fund research for a vaccination on short notice. You can't, you can't create policy around a virus that you then later on say, my mistake, you guys. It really wasn't as bad as we thought it was going to be. We have a pretty solid plan to take care of the high-risk individuals. Maybe we shouldn't have put so much money into a race for a vaccine. Maybe we did some things wrong. The government can't say that. They can't admit their mistakes. But what they can do is try to push to focus us, the American public, on something else. That's why I think they were never held accountable. Because if the United States government was to say, China, you, your bad health practices made this happen. That just opens the door to China being like, well, your bad decision about these health practices made it into something that it wasn't, right? Did we, did, did our labs potentially leak a virus? Yes. Well, I Was mean, our virus if, if you rewind, you? No. If, you, if you do rewind, there, China had an overreaction. Yeah, if we sure. had an overreaction, then they definitely had an overreaction because they were welding apartment doors shut, yeah. you know what I mean? And they were, I mean, arresting people, had people in mop suits. They had, they were disinfecting factories. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and so as severe as the response was here in the U.S., it was more severe there. So I don't, the difference I mean, is how no, could they claim that? Nobody followed China. China did what China did. Nobody took action until we took action. Mm -hmm. After the United States started started uh, locking people up and, or locking people, locking up businesses and forcing people to work from home and shutting down travel. After that, that's when you saw everybody else start to take, start to really apply the policies. I remember I was, I was in the Middle East at the time. I was in the UAE at the time. 
things went crazy in China and the UAE was undeter undecided how it was going to respond. Lots of Chinese were coming to and from Dubai and to and from Abu Dhabi, but you know, the Emirates didn't want to shut down all of their economy until they knew something was significant, right? Plus, they have a very small population and a really high level of medical technicians. So they didn't run into the risk, the, the oversaturation of hospitals like we had in the United States. But once the US president made an issue out of it, then the Emiratis made an issue out of it. And that's how things kind of tumbled. So China, you're right, China overreacted by our standards, but they reacted in exactly the way you would expect a surveillance police state, you know, to, to behave welding people into buildings and and doing other inhumane things yeah and then you know on top of that one of your responses when i asked why don't you think this was an act of war is because they released on their own people but we know they don't treat their people like we treat right. our people they have slavery still your shoes are probably made from it our phones are made from everything's made from it you know and 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 they have an overpopulation problem mm -hmm. so if I don't think it would be a out of the realm to say maybe this was some type of a population control thing for China, or maybe they maybe they did release it, you know, upon the world to create everything that happened. I mean, you're again considering that everything is a possibility. It becomes a question of probability. Mm -hmm. The in my in my estimate of China, they don't often make moves that that have more loss than benefit, and they've lost significantly since COVID came out. The, we all got smart to their role in supply chain management or supply chain control. We all got smart to their their uh, lack of human rights, their control of movement. I mean, those are human rights abuses. Right? They could have done that for decades, both of those, for decades without us ever even noticing it. Yeah. Coronavirus, it, it pulled the, the veil back. Not to mention the fact that then after the United States laid off of COVID, of COVID policy and Europe started pulling back COVID policy, the Chinese continued a very strict zero tolerance policy. Why would they do that? Right? There's Is there the potential that they were trying to essentially kill off their older generation and kill off their weaker, sicker generation because we know it targets immunocompromised individuals. Of course, there's a possibility, but probability-wise, they lost much more coming out of COVID than they gained. That doesn't strike me as a calculated, intentional move. Okay. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just, it's hard for me to believe it wasn't when, when all these other things, you know what I mean, lead to lead to their end game, their goal. So I don't think that, I, I, I think you're dead on about their end game. I think you're dead on about all of the, the multifaceted things that China's doing, for sure. The only place where I'm divergent is in thinking that COVID was intentional. For all we know, it was a biological weapon that they were planning to release when they executed their end game. Perhaps that's true, we don't know. All I'm saying is that I have a, I am, feeling like the higher probability reason that um, my, I am saying that the, it is low probability that they intentionally released it in 2019 in Wuhan among their own people for some strategic benefit. I feel like that was a mistake, either a mistake that happened naturally or a mistake that was fabricated in the lab, it was still a mistake. That's all I'm saying, because all this stuff is legit. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.